entrepreneurship, kind of rolling up our sleeves and getting stuff done. And I love how you've brought those two worlds a lot closer together Ooh. through belonging. I'm wondering if you could say maybe more about, maybe just wonder with me as to why that world of formation and asking who am I and who do I need to become? And for those of us that are following Jesus, like how do I, how do I become like Jesus in a way that's uniquely me on behalf of what I am discerning God wants, which certainly is a culture of belonging wherever we are. Any yeah. guesses as to why those feel so separate? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think for me, you know, as a follower of Jesus, my journey has been a lot about um, doing the work to get the uh, imperialism and the power dynamics out of my practice of following Jesus mm -hmm. and re-embracing this notion that, you know, Jesus is a, you know, um, journeyman, Palestinian Jew living on the underside of empire that was probably more likely to get thrown out of our spiritual institutions than he was to be put in the pulpit. And, and, and the more that I listened to the words of Jesus and listened to the formation that he was offering his disciples then, and I believe us now, I think the invitation was actually for us to become new human beings who would be inspired and fueled by Holy Spirit over human instinct. I think he was actually, this notion of being born again was less about a religious transaction as much as it was about a deeply spiritual formation of the human being in a world that is actually broken. Like this, mm -hmm. this pronouncement is being told to people who are marginalized and oppressed within a Roman imperial system. And yet he is inviting them into a new way of being Cuban that is not just about somehow undoing the structures of Rome, but it's actually about undoing the structures within themselves uh, so that they can be in service to a new world that actually has room enough for both the Jew and the Roman, which is a, a, a uh, very controversial, challenging dynamic. And, and so I think the reason it's challenging for us now is I think, you know, we have, you know, um, we're, we're trying to practice our faith in an environment that says that there's only room to either become or there's room to do. And, and so the anxiety that we feel when we see things wrong in our world, we see people being excluded, we see people being othered, we see violence, is to say, well, I need to respond and do something about this. I can have a cathartic release. I can be affirmed by the people around me that I'm being a good person. I have some material evidence to show that I'm advancing in my journey. But I think the invitation of becoming is far more important because I think if we will make a commitment to our formation as people to really begin to go on that journey about what does it really mean for me to become someone who doesn't just learn how to say the right word or virtue signal the right behavior, but how I actually learn how to be in relationship with my neighbor, with my enemy, how I really do the work inside me to learn how to love my enemy, how to imagine a world that has room for my enemy. Um, that if, if I can learn how to live in that tension, I am developing the kind of internal infrastructure that's gonna give me power to do the things that need to be done in a way that's far more sustainable than if I simply come to it in somewhat of a simplistic manner. And so I, I know it's it's hard because it in our microwave age, it somewhat challenges the rhythms we have of the way we get dopamine and the way that we, you know, feel a sense of, of connection. Um, but I really, you know, think that if we'll slow down in community with each other, uh, we'll be able uh, to see each other and subsequently build um, not the world we think we can get, but the world we desperately need.